Knicks fans in the round table. The round table debate hosted by the fans for the fans. Tonight's topic, the hottest topic of the offseason, the hottest topic of the preseason. We still have no answers. And that is who will emerge as the starting point guard of this team come October 17th, the home opener against the Hawks. Hopefully after tonight, we'll get some more clarity on the issue. But for those of you at home, you will pick tonight's winner. Joining me today, first, my man from the Nick of Time show, my man Jay Ellis. Also joining us, my guy Jake Lenick from the Lenix podcast. What's good, Jake? And uh, also joining us today, my man Terrence Ross, the real Terrence Ross from the <laughs> Terry and one. Trey show. <laughs> Fellas, what's going on, man? What's going on? Good, good. So, listen, the, the, the topic, the hot topic, um, who is going to be the point guard of this team? So, we saw Trey Burke come in and got the first two starts. Emmanuel Moutier came in and started against the Pelicans. And Frank Nielakeen and got his start against the Wizards. Coach David Fisdale was asked about the rotation, and he remained noncommittal about it, basically saying that no man has emerged. You know, he 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 sang the praises of of each guard and their and their positives, but he still remained noncommittal on this topic. Jay Ellis, I'm gonna start with you. Kick us off. If I'm Coach Fisdale, tell me who I should be starting and why. Um. As of now, today, I would still go with the one who was a little more proven. I would go with Trey Burke, at least to start the season. I feel like Trey has been working really hard in the all season. He's been working out in the desert and in, in, in squats and sand dunes and things of that nature. And as a starter last year, he did pretty well for us. He averaged like 18 points, 7.7 points since the game as a starter last season. And I, I really want to see if he can reproduce what he did last season this season. Now, the preseason, I feel like he hasn't really been shooting all that well in the preseason, but even with his uh, little deficiencies, I still felt like he, he, he still, to me, was the most – Consistent, like he, I felt like he was concentrating more on running the team a little bit more than scoring this season. Um, and I think it's going to pick up when the regular season starts. Now, I will say that Frank was really impressive when he played against the Wizards and he was aggressive in certain spots, but he wasn't aggressive when I like to call point guard spots, which means like top of the key areas when the defense is kind of pressuring him. I, I would like to see him attack a little bit more, but I do like um, his aggressiveness on when he played against John Wall and the Wizards. And if he continues that, I feel like Frank can eventually start uh, a few more games of that. But as of now, I'm still going with Trey Burke. So you're still going with Trigger Trey Burke. You did see him in the offseason, man, doing the Rocky workouts. He was out on the beach. He was, he was all over. He was yeah, doing the, man. He was doing the street ball runs. He went to Dykeman. He went back home yeah. to Kingdom League. He, Trey, Trey was definitely putting that work in. Jake, yeah, man. I'm going to go to you, man. Jay Ellis says Trey Burke is the guy. Come open the night, October 17th. Who is your guy and why? Listen, I love Trey Burke, and this is not to say that he shouldn't be starting because I totally believe he should. But if we're going to go in the traditional five-position set, I would say that the point guard, the guy that needs to do the most ball handling, needs to be our boy Frank Neely Kina. The French Prince. You're going with the French Prince. All right, <laughs> all right. The reason is is because we have so much invested in Frank Neely Kina. He was our eighth pick in the draft. He's, what, 19 years old, about to be 20 probably. Like, he's young. We have so much going on with him. And I think that, you know, Fisdale, you know, he wasn't my first pick for coach this year. That's no secret. But he's supposed to be this point guard whisperer. And I know that people don't love this mindset of, you know, tank. And I'm not saying tank. I'm saying play the players that you're going to move on with in the future. I'm talking Frank Nealikina. I'm talking Trey Burke. I'm talking Kevin Knotts. And whoever else can prove themselves, Alonzo Trier, Mitchell, um, Alonzo Trier, Mitchell Robinson, if they fall into place, so be it. But I think that you need to see what you got with Frank. You need to get him some playing experience. You need to get him in attack mode. You got to get him comfortable on the floor. So when we give the keys to him, per se, uh, that he's ready to take over. But I still do love Trey, and I do think that the new age NBA is moving to a two-guard set. 
And the two guards said, I think that we should move forward with is Frank Nielakina and Trey Burke starting at the one and two. Wow. That's, that's a hot take right there, man. So you, so you're putting mm-hmm. Timmy on the bench right now, basically. No, I'm not. I'm going, uh, I actually, no, I'm not. I'm putting Courtney Lee on the bench coming okay. off. I think my lineup should be Frank Nielakina and Trey Burke. Then Tim Hardaway at the three oh. go a little bit smaller. Kevin Knox at the four. Kevin Knox at the four. Canada to clean it up mm. okay 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 terry terry oh, it's on to you man we've heard uh trey burke we from jay ellis we've heard the combination of trey burke and frank nilakina but with frank being the lead guard um what's your take on this point guard situation man who's your guy come open tonight i, I just want to say it's telling we haven't heard the the other guy who shall remain nameless uh, are you on the moody bandwagon <laughs> are, are, are you about to break the ice here with moody he got one he got one. he's got is yeah. this a Boudier guy? Hell no. Uh, <laughs> obviously, you see me rocking it. And you brought up a lot of great points, right? Basically, Frank is the one we've invested in. Yeah. Now, I feel, look at KP's injury. I feel like the heavens can have aligned better for us to have basically like a gap year where we can just focus on development, building that culture. Uh, I think if KP was here, we might hear some murmurs of, you know, he wants to compete, stuff like that. Uh, we don't know what Frank can do yet. You know, we had him. We don't know more about Frank than we did when we drafted him. And that's really a failure on the Knicks and, you know, many ways, Jeff Hornacek. We didn't give this guy a chance to go out there and show us if he can run point guard. That uh, last game, the Wizards game, that was the first start he had at the point guard position. And he had the hardest matchup out of anyone so far. Yeah, he went up against John Wall and Beal, man. Exactly. They were both motivated. They were motivated because they lost that first game. Um, They didn't play too much. I know Wall only played nine minutes. But that last game, you could see Wall and Beal played mid-20s to high-20s minutes. They were playing hard. And Frank held his own. You know, he got to watch the foul trouble, stuff like that. But we need to know what we have. You know, if the San Antonio Spurs can let Deontay Murray take over while they're competing for the playoffs and while they're a competent fr- franchise, in a year when we, when Fis- uh, Fisdale has immunity, you know, we can, he's, no one's, he's not getting fired this year unless there's some crazy thing happening off the court. Let Frank play. Let us know what we have. That way, at least going into next season, if it's uh, free agency or anything like that, we at least know what we saw from Frank. Because right now, I still think we don't know. And we've definitely seen he's improved, right? His shooting is looking better. He's shooting um, shooting 50% from three on low volume, but still 44% from the field, way higher than he was last year. Um, if you look at 2018, actually, his shooting um, kind of around like late spring has been way better. So Frank is improving. you got to let these guys go out there and get the lump. Um, he's not going to – I don't think he's going to improve if you keep putting him off ball. Um, he's a natural point guard, may not have the natural skills to break down the defense just yet. But um, he, you know, when he gets when he gets in motion, he can cut. You see, you know, you see a bit of that coming out. So I think you gotta let Frank rock. That's the guy we we drafted. You know, Burke and Moody on what nine months left before their free agent. Interesting, interesting. And, and the last guy you brought up is is Emmanuel Moody. And um, in his start <laughs> against the Pelicans, you know, he still finished with uh, I think about six or seven dimes, uh, a paltry one for six or seven from the field. So he didn't really uh, score too much buckets. But Fizdale was still complimentary of him in saying that um, you know he is more of a uh, penetrating point guard than the other two. Um, he's able to get to the basket a bit easier than than both Frank and Trey. Um, Jake, I'm, I'm going to send it to you, but I'm going to open it up to, to you guys. Um, are we selling Moutier short? Well, first off, do you, do you think Moutier's here opening night? Do you think Moutier's here opening night? And, and are we selling him short in terms of this three-headed monster? I personally think that Moutier will get cut. Uh, mm. <laughs> The thing is, <laughs> so, you, so you think he's out of there? Do you think they give uh, Alonzo Trier his spot? I think Alonzo Trier. I feel like everybody's really big on Alonzo Trier, Trier. The one outlier I have is that for some crazy reason, Fizdale seems to have this hard on for Emmanuel Moutier that I don't understand. <laughs> His inter- introductory <laughs> conference, he's like, "We're gonna get to work with Yo, you." Yo, he focused <laughs> right on Moutier immediately, I, I man. Like, look at. Anybody else? <laughs> he, he zeroed in on Moutier. Like, listen, yeah, kid, yeah, you got to get you right, kid. But, like, the yeah. thing is, is, like, I, I loved Moutier as a prospect. And when he was coming in through the draft, he was mainly banked on potential. He was tall. He was athletic. If you put it all together, he could have been a great, uh, a great player. And I will still do that trade over again. Doug McDermott for Moutier, because you're trading – Known trash for unknown trash. <laughs> <laughs> you, you weren't sold on McBuckets? That's crazy. 
I mean, not the boss was in trash. That's a little extreme. I, 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 I did not like McDuckets stay here. I call him McDuckets because he was a oh. I can't stand him. Um, oh, my I would do that he went full Joe uh, Button, the trash. Okay. He went full Joe Button, yeah. Dono. <laughs> I, I would do that trade 100 times out of 100. But Moutier didn't pan out. I think it's time for us to cut our losses, move forward with, with what we have. Because for once in like 18 years, our guard situation is in a dumpster fire. So I think that that's a good thing. JL, it's on to you. Is Moutier here opening night? And are we selling him short in this uh, three-headed point guard rotation here? Are we selling him short? Are Absolutely. we selling him short? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> That's, I don't, how do you sell? How do you? Did you see what he did in Portland? Did you watch? Well, I mean, listen, like I said, I'm, I'm going from the coach's comments. I'm going from the coach's comments. And, and from what I did see, and from what I did see, yes, he I didn't know, score enough. But the I know coach, you have to, I know you have to say the, I know you have to do the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? The the I coach, I'm playing devil's advocate here. Yeah, I'm just I know, saying. I know, I know, you know what I'm know. saying? The I coach, know, know the doing. coach said he appreciated how Moutier pushed the pace. He finished with the most dimes. You know what I mean? He could still yeah. get to the bucket. Um yeah. like I said, are we cutting this guy off before his time? He's still what, 22 years old? Yeah, here's yeah. the thing. Yeah, um Moutier is not going anywhere first and foremost because he still costs like what? Four point five. About four million dollars. About four yeah, million dollars. We're, we're, we're not cutting Moody. He's too expensive. He's too much. Too expensive to cut at this point. He's not going anywhere. <laughs> if if anything, he'll just be in the back of the bench if we're smart. If Fizz is smart, he'll just be in the back of the bench, and he'll just gonna have to kind of groom him in practice, and then throw him in maybe two minutes a game to see if he can still, you know, function. And walk and chew gum. <laughs> 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 not fall down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not Basically. fall down. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know what's going on, Moody. I saw him play in the open practice. He looked like a completely different person than what I've been seeing in the preseason. He still was kind of tripping over himself in open practice, to be honest with you. But at least he wasn't there turning the ball over and he was hitting his shots. Like, I don't know what the hell I'm watching right now. Um, But, yeah, I don't – I don't – I'm not – we're not selling him short. And Fizz has, like like he said, a hard on for him. And he's going to be a long-term project. That's, that's pretty yep. much what it's going to be. He's a long-term project. Terry, on to you, man. Weigh in on this. Yeah, I, I agree. Fizdale, like you said, first press conference, he singles him out. I think Fizdale, being a developmental coach, feels like Moutier is just like, you know, his pet project. Like, if yes. I could just get this guy to work. Um, and he's going to be, I think he's going to be stubborn on this for way too long. Um, Emmanuel Moutier is playing, I just looked it up, 107 games he started in the NBA. At this point, like, Emmanuel Moutier got drafted, got to play a full season as starter. And then let Jamal Murray, who's a two guard, come in and take his spot. Uh, he's gotten his shot. You know, Trey Burke went through, you know, what he went through. He, he he took his lumps. He went down to G League, came back. Frank still hasn't gotten his shot. You look at these three guys, only one guy has really gotten, you know, extended. And he, not just not to mention last year, he gets traded here and immediately starts. Yeah. Like, there's not more. To me, I'm like, what more can you give Emmanuel Moody? He's shooting 14% from the field. Uh, who cares if he gets to the bucket? He falls every time he gets there or turns the ball over. Um, yeah. And to mention your point about open practice, I think Moutier is someone who kills it in practice. Kills it in, uh, <laughs> he's, he's a good, practice, he's a good man. practice player. <laughs> you put, yo, go put Moutier at Dykeman, put him at the Rucker, he's looking like a beast. Moutier is a, um, he's a, he's, he plays well when he's free, when he's not thinking, I think. He's, um, you know, but under the lights, I think he gets a little stressed out, starts overthinking, making mistakes. It's been three, what, for five years? This is his fifth season. <laughs> Moutier is done. At this point, um, you know, Fizz is going to keep him. Like I said, Fizz thinks it's his pet project. Um, and I think every practice he looks good there. And Fizz keeps thinking, man, what if you can do this at the Garden? But we have so much evidence at this point. It's kind of crazy to put him anywhere over guys like Frank, who even if his offense isn't there, is giving you something almost elite on the next end. And then Burke, who is probably the best, you know, well-rounded guy in terms of running the team from day one. Moutier just hasn't proven it. And um, the only way, the only reason he's rocking on the team right now is because of Fizz. And uh, I'll get Fizz, you know, let's get Fizz to see how he deals with him. But I think Fizz loves this guy. He just wants, he wants him, he wants to make him great. He wants to make Moutier great again. Hey, <laughs> that is his mission, man. That, yeah. that is his mission. Now, he also mentioned, and, and Jake had touched on this um, in, in his initial point, he also mentioned using these guys in, you know, in a tandem and combinations to kind of, you know, maximize their strengths. Um, you know, he pointed to Trey's ability to shoot the ball, Moutier's ability to penetrate, Frank's ability to uh, to defend. Um, 
Do you think he really has confidence in these three guys? I mean, he's coming from a Memphis where he had Mike Conley um, as the floor general. You know, a lot of teams aren't in this situation where they're talking about two or three guys at the at the floor general position. Um, what do you what do you think his his feeling is in, in regards to these three guys? Like, do you think he really has confidence in them? Um, Jay Ellis, I'm gonna start with you. Um, yeah, I feel like he has confidence in everybody. I mean, if he doesn't, he's selling it really well. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, he's fooling everybody because he, he yeah. does nothing but pump everybody up. And I think, listen, they, this team is built for development. They got Ivy from the OKC. They got P- dudes from, from the from the, the Lakers and the Dallas. They got Keith Smart. They got yeah. everybody here who's strictly for development. And Fizz is known in his league as the development coach. So I think that he's – 100% confident in himself and the staff around him that he's going to get the most out of these guys. So I think he's pretty confident in them and their his his abilities. Terry, what do you what do you think about a, a Frank and Trey um uh battery back there? Do you put Timmy on the bench or do you start him at the 3 like Jake said? What do you think about that? And Jake, so I'll let I don't you think clap it, back. Yeah, I don't think there's any chance Fizz starts Timmy at the 3 just because early when he got um you know in the first couple of weeks after he retired Facts. He straight up said Lee and Hardaway are too small to play the three. Facts. I think he probably looked at some tape from last year, saw them getting abused repeatedly. You know, they switch back and forth sometimes. Um, so I don't think I don't think Timmy starts at the three. Though I will admit, Tim Hardaway at his best is a sixth man on a pretty good team. He's not a starting two guard on a good team on a, on like a team in the playoffs going deep uh, until he fixes you know his shot selection. I would love a Trey and um, and Frank backcourt. Uh, Trey and Frank worked out a lot together over the summer. I know Trey made an Instagram post a couple um, weeks ago about him and Frank, um, and he spoke about it. Now he takes Frank to the gym in the morning. Uh, my worry though is that Trey Burke dominates the ball so much. I think Frank looks up to Trey, like he sees you know his skill as a PG because Trey Burke still has pretty good skill for a PG. Yeah. I think Frank looks up to him, and Frank's going to defer too much if he's in the backcourt with Trey. I can see Frank. Frank already dumps the ball sometimes when he crosses half court. Jake, what do you think about that? Yeah, I think that that's a solid point. I think that, but I think that it will work in a different direction. I think that the Knicks, and I don't like to compliment the upper management too much because of what they've done <laughs> in my life over the past 26 years. But um, I think that that's actually a good point. They went out and they made a point and a case to get these quote unquote young veterans, the guys that have been through the league, high draft picks, a lot of potential, but also their careers got derailed for one reason or another. I mean, you see, we got Mario Hazonia. We went after Moutier. Trey Burke falls into this category. And you see these interviews with these guys that are constantly saying, I didn't put the work in like I should have. I made this mistake. I made mistake X, Y, and Z. And I want to help guys like Kevin Knox and Frank and KP and whoever it is kind of mature into the player that they could be by working the way they are. And I think that if you have a mentor like that, it adds comfortability on the court. I think that if you put Trey Burke next to Frank, like I think that we should, uh, it would ultimately work a lot better. And I think that Trey would actually encourage Frank to go outside of his comfort zone more often than not. Yeah, he still has a little bit of those rookie jitters. I mean, the guy is, I don't think he's 20 yet, right? He's still 19. Yeah, he's not. Yes, I think he. Yeah, I think he's 20, like a, like a month ago or two months ago or something like that. Okay. Well, like, yeah. Imagine a 20-year-old you, you know, going out in the middle yeah. of Madison Square Garden every night. Like, it's, it, a lot. it's fair to say that that would shake you up. But the thing is, my point about Tim Hardaway Jr. isn't so much of a Fizdale thing. I don't think he's going to start at three. If I was the coach, I would start him at three. three. Okay. That's the way the NBA is going. Fizdale, though, and this is part of the reason that sketched me out of the, the coaching decision at first, he seems like one of these guys that has a PhD in PR. He always says the right thing. <laughs> yeah. That that Lance Draymond uh, uh, comparison it, it yeah. leads me to believe that oh, as yeah, well. Man. He's saying all the right things. Yeah. <laughs> but like he, to me, he's a lot of show and not that much substance. He took a very well-oiled machine in Memphis. I get he tried to redirectionalize them to kind of make them more new school, but he derailed them and made them into a bottom three team. Uh, you know, he has... Nah, the- that's not really that fair, though. J- yeah. JL's way in, man. What do, you, what do you think? Way in, man. I mean, he, I mean, as soon as he left, I mean, he, he got Conley's game to where it is today, and as soon as he left, their defense fell apart. 
So mm-hmm. I don't and and he was kind of pushing him into the future. I mean, he he knows he made his mistakes. Yeah, like yeah, like that. he's pushing him into the future into where the where the NBA was going, which is a faster three point shooting team, and they were kind of uh, reluctant to do that. So I don't know if that's completely fair to say that he's the reason that that the whole thing was derailed. I mean, he is the reason because of the Marcus Saul situation. Yes, but they were doing yeah, you know was- he, they was on the right path before. But, but the point that I was making was like it, it, he did great things with Mike Conley. You can't really disregard that. But he did feud with his European big man. That was a big red flag to me because that's our centerpiece right there, a European big man. I don't want him to lose focus on KP trying to develop Emmanuel Moutier, his little pet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, he, I, did I to, he did fly out to, you know, halfway I've around the world. I've seen a lot smarter people derailed <laughs> by obsessing over something stupid and spending their whole life on, uh, on development. <laughs> Terry, <laughs> Terry jumping. <laughs> I'll say this. I tell you, but regarding with you know regarding the KP thing, I think if Rasim Fizdale love guys now, when he gets his hands with a real all star, he's going to shift his focus to KP. Of course. Um, but uh, look, guys, Moutier, I think it's a pointless discussion. Um, I think uh, Fizdale is going to realize very soon he's got to cut this rotation down to 10, 11 guys, right? I think Moutier, mm-hmm. who I don't know who mentioned it, but Moutier is going to get um, garbage time minutes for sure. I think he's going to get like the last five minutes of a game if we're blown out, if we're blowing out the team. Um, but he, he she does not deserve to be part of the rotation. You eat um, what you kill, you eat what you kill, and then he starts Moody after two horrible performances. I know you're trying to get him started, but like once the game starts, I definitely believe Fizdale is going to be trying to win. And winning and Moody just don't go in the same sentence. Free dot, that's going to take his minutes. That's what's going to happen. That's and that's what I'll, I'll take that any day. Free dot, free dot is the name of the game. Um, so so yeah. this this last point. So Terry talks about you know, you keep what you kill. Um, and that was Fizdale's Fizdale's mantra when he first got here. And and Jake has, has kind of made a point. You know, Fizdale has kind of won the PR game. And, and rightfully so. He's had to come in and, and rebuild his image along with the Knicks trying to rebuild their Nick. image. So I, I think it works. I think it goes hand to hand. And I think that's why they've been able to get along so swimmingly. Um, but on those topics... You know, so I had a caller. We had a caller um, on the last preseason game, JL, that said, if it's keep what you kill, ISO Zoe's killing right now. I, I was about to say, no one's <laughs> talking about having a Frank uh, ISO starting lineup. Uh, it's interesting. I, I like it. I like it. But I know contracts play a role, man. I know. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't see him benching Tim. I just don't. I just, yeah, I don't see it either. It's yeah, I don't fantasy. see it. My fantasy yeah. head. Yeah. I like it. I like I, it. I don't understand why you would start Iso Zo over Trey. I get he has the size a little bit more, but Trey seems like a more NBA uh, ready. Ready. No, of- that's that's a fact. No, that is a fact. I'm. Yeah. You know what it is too. I guess in my mind, I'm I'm, I'm thinking in the future because to me, Trey is more of an NBA ready player. And like that's right why I would start him, and I know and I know that they're not going to move Tim Hardaway Jr. out to start lineup for some reason. But in the, in the future, that, yeah. I feel yeah. like a Frank, a Frank and Trey lineup. Yeah, you can kind of have that ball movement, that ball handling with the defense on on at the one and kind of the two as well. So I feel like maybe that could work. But um, in the future, because Tra- ISO still has still does too much ISO. Well, I, I I love the way ISO Zoe is looking. I think that he could definitely yep. be a part of us moving forward. I mean, growing up watching those teams with Jamal Crawford, whenever I see Alonzo <laughs> Trier, I just get flashbacks, and you know, it's just I know it's preseason ball. And that's a huge stretch to say that he's going to become uh, the equivalent to the greatest six man in the history of basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, shout like out it. JC, man. JC needs a it's team. Hashtag sign Jamal Crawford. Somebody, yeah. man. Or how's he out, yeah, he out of a job right now? He holding he hold out for the dough. That's what I'm hearing. That's he's, what I think. He's got to come back. He's got to come back in like, uh, what, 2021? He'd probably be yeah, he'll, he'll get back. his jersey up in the gotta get it. I want to be the last man on the team, that the Knicks team that wins the chip. We got to hurry up, though. Facts, man. Facts. But what about <laughs> Baker, man? The coach said ba- Baker's a dog out there, man. What about <laughs> Baker? Situational. Let me say this about Rob Baker real quick. Yeah. Rob Baker outplayed Moody A. I've, I've seen like, yes. every preseason game. Rob Baker's going to be in this league a long time. I tweeted a couple, uh, like last week, I tweeted that I think Rob Baker's going to be in the NBA longer than Moody A. And you can see it. Rob Baker knows his role. He's limited, don't get me wrong, but this dude puts his body on the line. Once you put him out there, you know what you're going to get for five minutes a game. I think teams love that guy, like the 13th guy on a team. Um, whereas Moody A, I think Moody A is still trying to be a star in his head. Instead of just focusing on trying to be like a role player, backup point guard. He's so still trying to be that guy that he was touted as coming out of uh, China. 
Jake, you were shaking your head. Are you not a part of the Brown Baker fan club? What what say you, man? I don't want to get this twisted. I don't hate Ron Baker, <laughs> the person, okay? The person is a fantastic guy. Oh, I will have all the success in the world as long as it's elsewhere. Not on- <laughs> Ron Baker as a single, is exactly the epitomization of the Knicks dysfunction. This sideshow act that has gone too far. He's the gritty little white guy that dies all over the floor. He <laughs> <laughs> can't dribble. He can play a little bit of defense here or there. But I'd rather have a decent offensive player and an atrocious defensive player than a bad off uh, defensive player and a horrible offensive guy. Get <laughs> off my team immediately. <laughs> I'm going to defend white guys for one second. Okay? <laughs> Go ahead, Jails. Wait, wait. Hashtag defend white guys. <laughs> for white. I'm just a hater. <laughs> Jails, oh, you got a Ron Bacon topic before you wrap this up? Yeah, yeah, Ron. Listen, man. Uh, I like Ron Baker as a 13th man on the bench situation. That's how I do. Like, he was touted as a guy who's like a three-point sniper before he got here. I feel like the Knicks, one, try to force him into being a point guard, and that's not really his role. His role is really a shooting guard. He's a situational point guard in spots because he can, he can still pass in, in certain spots, but he's not a point guard for real. And um, I feel like his shooting has been derailed over the last couple of seasons because he's had an injury the shoulder, in the off-seasons. In off the shoulder, yeah. In the shoulder, yeah. And, and that's, that is when you get better. You get better in the off-seasons. So for the last two seasons – you injured, he's not going to get any better. So I feel like it's. I feel like the shooting still can catch up if he's given the time to actually develop himself in the offseason. And we've seen, like, he started to hit some shots today. I mean, this preseason from three minutes. So I will take uh, Ron Baker as, like, a 13th guy in the One situation. last point on this whole Yeah, go ahead, Jake. I'll, I'll, I'll let you close it out, Jake. I, I used to have a basketball coach. The guy was a lunatic. He was an absolute psycho. <laughs> but – you know, to us less athletic, smaller guys, when we were going out for the big name teams, he's like, hey, you know how to make a basketball team? When a ball gets loose and is going out of bounds, you head headfirst for it, you slam your head in the ring, and get concussion. That'll put you on the team. Ron Baker is that guy. But don't give that guy six million dollars over two years he's the new mr all. untouchable man he used to be nicky barnes there. now it's ron baker no, man i agree with you there you don't give him six million dollars you give him a million I, I wouldn't put that on scott perry that was a steve mills move before was that nine mil though i thought it was nine mil wasn't it 4.5 each year or four, five, yeah 4.5 each year, four five each year. Yeah, that was a, i know who we were bidding against that was um, stupid I, yeah, that was a, <laughs> That was stupid. <laughs> that was Steve Mills getting away with the pen, man. And I blame that Noah deal on him as well, man. I feel like Phil was like, go get Noah, and Steve Mills was at the negotiating table. I don't think <laughs> Phil I don't think Phil was negotiating these contracts, man. That makes sense. Uh, the yeah, undermining yeah. the Knicks organization for – he's been James Dolan's right-hand man since day one. Hey. He really – well, you know how yeah. Dolan is, man. That you know, he goes with the guys that he trusts, um, and and he he'll take care of the business side, and he lets that guy handle the operations. So, for better or worse, you know, in Steve Mills, we got to trust for right now. You know, for now, yeah, for now, for now. I he has his favorite. Look yeah, what he's him. Yeah, I trust him. With Perry's there with him. No, I like Perry. Yeah. I yeah. actually met Perry I the, the the day that he got inducted as the new Knicks GM. I ran into him. Oh shit! Yeah, this is a good story actually. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, my God, like, I can't, like, you must have just got back from the press conference. I'm a huge fan, been a Knicks fan my whole life. And instead of, like, brushing me off, like, yeah, whatever, I went through this all day, he sat down and talked to me for a little bit. Oh, nice. And, wow. and uh, he was just like, yeah, man, like, I appreciate the fandom. Like, and I knew about him. I, I, I definitely uh, followed him a little bit throughout his career. But I was just like, the one thing I can tell you, I know you know basketball, you're a basketball guy. But make every move with Knicks fans in your brain first. Think about us yeah. first. Yeah. We've been. <laughs> Yo, no, it's interesting you say that because because Perry did mention that um, in his offseason interviews. You know his dialogue with the fans and you know fans being knowledgeable and just explaining to him you know to stay the course and stay patient. So yeah, I, I definitely hear that. It's a good story, man. Go ahead, Terry. I was gonna say Knicks fans are double edged sword because the Knicks fans would have traded Giannis after one season. They would have been like this Euro guy averaging eight points. Um, <laughs> You're right about that. 
<laughs> My, um, what's his name? Michael Carter Williams, right? Remember um, Philly's pick that year? Yeah. 17, 6, and 6 his rookie year. I could have heard Knicks fans, yo, yo, we should have gotten uh, Michael Carter. So Knicks fans, uh, but we are, honestly, look, look at that. Look at this group. Beautiful group. We're, yeah. we're knowledgeable. We know what we're doing. Um, I think Perry is, thankfully, Perry is here because I think he keeps Steve Mills in check. Yes. Because Perry was not going to give Tim Hardaway that money the year after we signed Courtney Lee. Hell and then no. the year we started Hell the rebuild. No. Like, um, I don't even, I don't hate Tim. I hope Tim figures it out. But we just traded Melo. There was no reason for us to go right back into giving money to anyone. Why we could have let, yeah, it was. Kicker. What the hell? Yeah. Uh, oh, my God. You can't even get rid of him. So I'm just praying on Timmy this season with his uh, with his shooting percentages. Listen, you, you like him or not, you got to kind of just be like, okay, you know, Tim Hardaway yeah. four years, $72 million. <laughs> like, and that's why he's going to start, too, because four years, $72 yep. million. Dollars. <laughs> you don't not start an $18 million player. Yep. That's <laughs> Noah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so at this point of the segment, we give our panelists 30 seconds to make their final points before we wrap up. Terry. All right, simply put, if you draft a project, play the project. There's no point in drafting someone, burying him on the bench, and then losing him as an asset. I'm a big Frank fan, but I'm a Frank fan because he plays for the Knicks. It's not like Frank Nelikina has done so much in his career so far that I'm just standing him for no reason. If we get an asset like that, use him. At this point, we know he's here for this seconds. season and two after this. Uh, so use the man who you drafted. Real quick, follow us on YouTube, NYK, Terry, and Trey. All right. That was my man, Terrence Ross, the real Terrence Ross. The real one. <laughs> the real one. The real one. All right, Jake. Uh, I'm going to put it on you. Jake. I'll keep it real simple. In a small ball league, think small. Frank Neely Kina is an uh, exception to the rule 6'6. Six, six. Trey Burke right next to him would be beautiful. Follow us at the underscore Lennox. That's T-H-E underscore L-E-K-N-I-C-K-S. We've been off the map for a little bit, but we're coming back. I got the little drip right here. All right, all right, all right. merchandise. All right, I saw that. <laughs> we're going to bring back the podcast with the YouTube Live, so make sure you subscribe and follow. Appreciate there you, you go, there you go, man. And um, salute Jake and his brother Michael, man. That was the first podcast I ever did was the Linux podcast, man. Oh, that was a good episode. Yeah, that was a good episode, man. That was a good one. So I um, definitely appreciate you, man, and we'll definitely do this again yeah, sometime, man. Yeah. Definitely. All right, JL, you, you know the drill, man. I'm going right. on you. And here we go, yo. Trey Burke is the born killer. If you keep him what you kill, you're going to start Trey Burke, man. And Franklin Lakina is a killer in training. I see the development coming, and I feel like he will be a killer eventually, and we'll be able to swap those two out and have – Frank guarding those big guards and Trey even come off the bench or even going side by side with him. So I'm saying you got to start Trey. No matter what, you have to start Trey. Now, um, check my soundcloud.com slash Nick Time Show. Also my YouTube, youtube.com slash Nick Time Show. And you always catch that merch. That merch. <laughs> that merch right here. Yeah, go to go to my uh, my YouTube. You can see the links in, all, in the bios in the uh, descriptions of my posts. Facts, facts, man. So I'm going to leave it to you guys, the fans. Who had the best points tonight? Was it Jay Ellis from the Nick of Time show? Was it Jake Lenick from the Lenick's podcast? Or was it the real Terrence Ross from the Terry and Trey show? Vote at the top right-hand corner. Leave a comment below. Let, let me know what you think. Who's your starting point guard come open tonight? Let me know what you think. Leave it in the comments below. Shout out to CK2K who won the last round table. If you haven't seen that series of three, I'm going to put a link also in the top right so you can catch up on previous round tables, man. So until next time, I'll catch you guys later. Peace. So I, don't even think about, I don't even think it's about starting. I feel like it's about minutes. Like As long as Moody is out the damn picture, then, then <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, feel like, I feel like I feel like he can actually get some real, real minutes if he's starting at point guard or coming off the bench at point guard. And then I feel like Fizz is going to leave him in the game. I probably should have said this on during the yeah, right. On the face. <laughs> <laughs> I, I might have won. <laughs>